And Bro wanted me to talk about a certain period of time that the Bible doesn't talk about, right? This is the Old Testament and this is the New Testament, right? What is this called? Dark Ages. Or... No. Bro, uh, Josh? I forgot the moment of silence. Was uh, good. <laughs> Era of silence for the Christians. If you're a brainiac and you want to sound really cool, it's called the intertestamental period. That's what I was going to say. Oh, right, right. <laughs> See, New Te Old Testament, New Testament, intertestamental, get it? Intertestamental. Okay, which is the era of silence, which means during this particular time, God doesn't speak to anyone. Like nothing. Like God isn't talking to nobody. Now, go to Malachi, right? That's the last book of the Old Testament. I'm going to run out of time. Um, Malachi. Uh, last book of the Old Testament. That's right before Matthew. Uh, what's the last five verses? I'm sorry, read from five and on. Somebody. From the four? Yeah, uh, chapter four, verse five to six. Read it. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with the decree of utter destruction. All right, so this is what Malachi says in the Old Testament, right? He says, I will send you who? What's the name he uses? Elijah. Elijah, right? And um, I will send you Elijah. And then he says, uh, what does he say? Um, turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. He will turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the hearts of the children to their parents. Or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. So Malachi says this. And then God cuts off all communication. Completely. Now, during this particular time, Malachi was written around the year 430. Okay, the actual, the Hebrews were, were rebuilding the temple. They were doing, um, they rebuilt the temple. They had established their, their laws again, and they were following their laws again, and everything was kind of being respected. They were being governed by the Persians during this time while Malachi was alive. And then Malachi, but the problem is that they were turning to pagan religions, as Jews usually do. They were going back to the pagans. So Malachi says, I'm going to send you Eli, or Elijah, and then uh, you, he will have you turn back to your children. What happens in Matthew? Who, who's the first person we hear about in the book of Matthew? Let's see. Jesus. Nope. David? No. no. Who? Why does your answer? In the book of Matthew, who's the first person that we hear about? One of, David. No, it wasn't David. That You're reading the genealogy. John. John the Baptist. Yes. Yes, guys? Yes? Yeah. So one of the first people we hear about is John the Baptist. What was John the Baptist's job? Baptizing. It was. One of them was baptizing, but what was his other one? <laughs> Prepare the way for who? Jesus. For Jesus, right? Now, there's something in particular that was said about John the Baptist. Does anybody know? He had the spirit of who? Elijah. Elijah. John the Baptist had the spirit of Elijah. Malachi says, the Lord will send you Elijah and he will turn back the hearts. But he promises Elijah. John the Baptist, 400 and 500, about 400 years later, comes with the spirit of Elijah. But what the heck happened here? What happened here? Elijah got lost. <laughs> okay. This is what I want to talk about. What happened here? And how God is was very much alive and, 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 and active in parts of history that we don't know about. Okay? Which is, is at least for me, it's interesting. Okay? <clears throat> Persians ruled here. They respected Jewish people. The Jewish people are allowed to um, to to govern to to, to to worship as they see freely, okay. And then comes the second half. I hate dates, okay. And this was uh, this was around four thirty. What do I have to about three thirty? Is there a documentation, a Christian documentation? On um, the arrow of silence, yeah. Uh, kind of. But not really. And I'll say I'll tell you why I'm gonna say that in a little bit. I don't know if the 
this is what you're implying, but are you kind of saying that he was like doing other things in that time? No. Oh. No. You'll uh, you'll see what he was doing behind the scenes. Oh. That's what I want to say. So. <clears throat> The age of Malachi, or the age of the Persians, was between 430 to 330. And then came a different era. I'm going to test your guys' history. Hopefully it's not too shabby. Or maybe even your movie choices, okay? okay this second one. Okay, who comes after this period that's one of the biggest conquerors of all times? I gave you clues already. Yeah, the biggest conqueror. One of the biggest conquerors of all time. Alexander. Alexander the Great. Okay. Does anybody know about Alexander the Great? He was great. He was great. <laughs> yes, that he was. Why was he great? He conquered almost the entire world. He conquered from Greece all the way to India. All the way to almost what's Kazakhstan, if you kind of know your map. It was a ridiculous amount of land that he conquered. So he conquered land. Okay, right. Now, what else did he do that was very, might be important for us? And this is where we're going to... This is one of, the most, two, one of the most important parts of this whole thing. What do you guys know about Alexander the Great? What did he do? You guys saw the movie. What did he do? Right, don't pretend like the movie is the only thing... Which movie? Alexander the Great. You ready to say it? I've never seen it. I've never seen it. Let me see. If you're not going to read it, at least watch the movies, man, and learn about it. Jeez. 300 relevant. Not during this period of time. I'm looking it up. Okay, let me explain why Alexander the Great was so great. Okay? He was smart. All right, he was definitely smart. He was, he was actually, if I have this, I have this. Correct, and I just learned that I should know this. Alexander the Great was a student of Plato. Everyone know who Plato is? Yeah. Yes. One of the greatest philosophers of all time. Plato. <clears throat> if it's not Plato, it's Aristotle. It's one of those two. Okay, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, sh I'm shaking on which one of those two it is, but it's definitely one of those two. Okay. Now, what language did Alexander the, the Great speak? Greek. Greek, yes. Good, good guess. Okay, Greek. That was confident. <laughs> that was so, confident. All right. so he spoke Greek, right? Now, tell me something interesting about the Greeks that you might know. They have a lot of gods. They have a lot of gods, yes. What else? Anybody else? They're lovers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Okay. <laughs> kind of has to do with the gods, yes. Okay. What else? They're highly, uh, they're very. Highly intelligent. Highly intelligent. They're like at the top of the pyramid. Okay. Because they're highly intelligent, Alexander the Great and all the land that he conquers, he's very focused on educating all the areas that he conquers. By educating all the areas that he conquers, he makes one common language amongst all the areas. Greek. So now in the areas that he's conquered, Alexander the Great has established one common language amongst all the people. Education, roads, and believe it or not, he, he is one of the first people who establishes a type of currency. What's currency? Money. 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 As in not barter like, give me a chicken, I'll give you a goat. You know, I saw they used to get their money. I'll give you no know, two chickens for one goat. You know, you start bartering, right? Alexander the Great says, no, let's use currency. I'll give you some silver coins. You give me that goat. Okay. That's what he establishes. So he establishes Greek. He, either Greek, he establishes a language. He establishes an education system. He establishes currency. And he establishes roads. Why are roads important? They all lead to Rome. They all lead to Rome. All roads. You ever heard the thing? All roads lead to Rome. It's because that's what Alexander the Great did. He began to build roads, okay, and then obviously Rome took over, over the whole thing. So, he establishes roads. Now, after this period, oh, I mean, something that's very, very important. During this particular period, uh, the Jews are actually allowed to, um, they're allowed to practice their religion. 
he doesn't he doesn't last for a long time because then the Egyptians come in and they take over and the Jews are allowed to practice their religion and then the Syrians come in. Now the Syrians is a problem. There's a guy named Antiqui and and Antiquis. Okay. He sacrifices a pig in the temple. Why is that a problem? That's, that's, why is it important? Why is that? Why is that an issue? Huh? It's an unclean animal. So during this time, he he takes over. He's a he's a per, he's a Syrian. That's why uh, they don't get along to this day. Okay, he's a Syrian. He 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 sacrifices a pig in the temple. That's a huge no no, right? You, you don't you don't do that. Or was it his son? What if it was the best pig? It doesn't matter what pig it is. It's a pig. And then we have, uh, from 166 to about 63, we have a, in a period of time called, it's such a weird name. I'm almost done with this, okay? The Hasmonean period, okay? Hasmonean. Why is this important? Hasmonean, you know, okay. Hasmonean period. Why is this important? I'm going to get to where I want to go to soon, right now. Hasmonean period is important because his son... Okay, he also desecrates the temple, desecrates temple, and then there's a guy called Joseph Maccabeus. He leads a revolt. He says, no, we're not having this. Like, we're, you're not going to be sacrificing a pig in our temple. You're not going to be desecrating the temple. So he starts to revolt as a Jewish, as a Jewish man. And they take over Jerusalem, and they conquer Jerusalem, and Jerusalem belongs once again to the Jews, and then they keep fighting for us so many years, and then Rome comes in and he wipes them all out, and everything belongs to Rome. Rome allows the Jews to practice their religion. Now, here's where I want to get to, okay? This is all happening between Malachi and Matthew, okay? So, so during this whole time, the, the, the spirit of Elijah is promised. And then the Greeks established one common language which allows all the countries in the world to be able to talk to each other. That's important. Okay, so now it's not like different... different um, it's like a language barrier. There's no language barrier. They all speak one common language. So they all speak one common language. There's a sense of currency. There's roads. And there's, there's a need for intelligence or a need to seek intelligence and to be educated. All of a sudden, the Jews rise up. There's a sense of pride for who they are as Jewish people because Joseph Maccabeus has made a stand since he's taken over the temple and he's taken over Jerusalem because Jerusalem belongs to them. So, um, what is it? Uh, what's the word when you're proud of your country? What is it? Um, patriotism is at all time high okay? because Joseph Maccabeus has taken over the temple they love their laws, and they're going back to the way that things used to be. Why do I say all this? Because of the amount of patriotic pride that exists, the languages, the roads, the currency, it's a perfect time for Jesus to come in. Because then there are no barriers. You see, even during this time, there's them, there's them called, have you guys heard of the Septuagint? No. During the Greeks, during the and this is what oh, this is amazing. During during the Greeks, okay, they they took they took six people from each tribe of Israel. How many tribes in Israel? Twelve. Twelve. They took six from each tribe. How many is that? Seventy-two. Seventy-two. They put them all in a different room. All every single one of them. And they said, okay, here's um, here's the Old Testament in Hebrew. Translated to Greek. And that's what they did. It took 72 days to translate it for each person. When they brought all 72 copies together, they were all the exact same, no difference between any of them. Septuagint. It comes from the Latin 70. So that's why it was so... <sighs> I'm revered as something so special because 72 different people translating it from a different language into Greek 
all made, didn't make any mistakes, and they all were exactly the same. And that's why it was seen as something as an act of God. So you have an Old Testament written in Greek. When everyone speaks Greek, everybody been, is being taught Greek. So most of the countries that, that, that is conquered by Alexander the Great in Rome speak Greek. There's a currency, there's roads. Um, everything's flourishing. The Jews are proud of themselves and who they are. They're able to, to practice religion as they see fit. It just makes it a perfect time for Jesus to come in and fulfill his ministry. It's just a perfect time. Because if these things wouldn't have existed, I, I wonder, I think the story of the gospel would have been a little bit different. The way that Jesus goes from one, one city to another, like how, you know, where he's traveling from place to place, it's because of the roads that exist. It makes it possible, it makes it easier. There's a currency, there's a language, there, there's the Old Testament is written in the common language for the common people to read. Does that make sense? So during the Old Testament period, all, even though God, excuse me, during the era of silence, even though God isn't talking to anyone, like he's preparing the coming of the Messiah. And before he arrives, he sends John with the spirit of Elijah. Like he said he was going to. So the era of silence is God not saying anything, but it's God preparing the way for the Messiah to come. He's preparing the field for the Messiah to come. Does that make sense? Yes? Questions? No? We get it? Okay. So the question asked to me, or Robert asked the question, and he wanted me to address, because he said somebody asked this question, the question is, um, why doesn't God talk to us in the way that he used to talk to people in the Old Testament? It feels like we're living in an era of silence. Like God doesn't talk to us in the way that he used to talk to the Old Testament prophets. Is the AC on? That AC's on. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, so, why doesn't God talk to us in the way that he did in the Old Testament? Why doesn't he talk to us in the way that he talked to a lot of the apostles and the people in the New Testament through Jesus Christ? Why? Are we living also in the era of silence? Is there, is there a preparation for something that's coming that we're being prepared for? What do you think? Why doesn't God talk to us anymore like he used to? Why? I'll wait before I start calling on names. Can you like emphasize on what you mean by that? So, like, through what? Through how, did God directly? how did God communicate in the Old Testament? How? With prophets. And? He spoke to them. That's the way he communicated, right? So you're... Why doesn't he do that with us anymore? How do you communicate in the New Testament? Through Jesus. Right? Why Why? Why do, do we not get... like a grander scheme? Because I obviously, like, sometimes I feel like God talks to me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, individually, I feel like everyone has their own experiences with God. But do you mean in, like, a more obvious way? Yeah. Because the Old Testament was obvious, right? Like, here's a prophet, and he's going to tell you what God said. And if you didn't do what the prophet said, he'd probably kill you. I think it's more direct now. I think the problem is us. I think we're so caught up in today's culture, and we're so, we don't have time to watch um, advertisement while we're watching YouTube videos. Like, the moment that you see the skip button, you're clicking that button and anybody who says otherwise is lying <laughs> because when it doesn't give you the option you're like oh my gosh like three yes, seconds yes, are killing yes. you know what i mean yeah. so we are not in a place or you know i don't think that like the prophets back in those days they were in a place of like wanting to listen whereas right now we want to be talked to but we don't want to listen I also we will make ourselves available. Saying that a loud voice through the clouds is talking to you. You're not going to listen. 
No, I'm saying you're gonna be. So like, say, I'm sitting there. I'm impatient. <laughs> I'll listen. I'm not saying everyone, but you can't say like that. God is does not speak to us in today. Like he, you can't say that because God does. I mean, we see it with. You know, churches are still churches are still growing. We see these big mega churches growing. You see people rise up. We see like this week, you know, with um, Billy Graham passing away and stuff like that. Like, you think God didn't speak to to him? Mm. Like, come on. Okay. Or that through he speaks through these people to reach to others. Mm -hmm. But I do think that like God is more. He can speak to us directly now through Jesus more than. He, back in those days where it was through the prophets. It was only a selected few. Be careful when someone hears God talk to them, okay? Because God doesn't speak to anyone in a, in a voice anymore. Like he says, if you want to hear what God has to say, read your Bible. If you want to hear, hear what God has to say, read your Bible out loud, right? I mean, it's not that God comes down and he like literally, his voice, like you can hear it like, that just doesn't happen that way anymore. Mm -hmm. Today is done more through kind of like a revelation. More like he, he shows you things. But to speak to you in a voice, like we have to be very careful when we say that. For a lot of reasons that I think we're going to have to get into later. Um, but we can discuss that, right? Because I think it's an, a, a topic for discussion. Yeah, like when they say like, oh, God's... They say, people say that God spoke to me, but yet what you're saying that God spoke to you doesn't, it's not backed up by his actual word. Like it's in two opposite directions. Like what God, if God spoke to you and it contradicts what's written, God didn't speak to you. Somebody right. else spoke to you. Mm -hmm. It wasn't God. But right. what would you say of like a, like to a Pentecostal who like can speak in tongues, you know? Like, wouldn't that count as like, I guess the spirit talking through them? No. And, and we, we can really dive into that subject, but no. I, absolutely not. Not in the way that a lot of Pentecostals do it. It's not done biblically the way the Bible requires it. And that's what scares me. I'm not saying it's not possible. I, I've never seen it done in the way that it should be done. Or that the Bible requires it for it to be done. So why doesn't God talk to us anymore? Why? Uh, Elijah, Elijah stood before... Um, before like uh, like a thousand pagans, and he asked God to rain fire from the heavens, and what happened? Fire came down and consumed <coughs> the sacrifice, the wood and the water. How come we can't see that anymore? Why? Why can't we see that? Why are we not allowed to do that anymore? Why can't I pray for fire? And show my atheist friends, look, I'm going to pray right now and then fire is going to come down right here and then you're going to believe. Why can't we do that? I mean, I, I know like a lot of people say like the world is just getting worse. But I feel like that also has something to do with it. Like, I guess the world, the more modern it got, the more it pushed God away. Absolutely. And I think that might be a big reason why he doesn't show himself evidently. You know, okay. You, you guys have never asked yourself but, that, like, which I, I get. You, wouldn't like, you want to rain like, fire? pray over people to heal. Like, people who have cancer, they heal. We see these other miracles that's not necessarily, all right, we're going to fire. But God, who is this person? So, God. the apostles prayed over people. Was there ever someone who did not get healed? No, because you're in the shadow of the healing. Why can't we do that? What's wrong with us? Is it us? Is it God? Is it the times? It's the times. I think it's the times. So it's the times more than the, than the people. I think it's the people and the times. The people make the times. <coughs> wouldn't you want to, like, wouldn't you want to do it? Like, wouldn't you want to sit, tell, tell somebody, get up, and, like, see them walk? Why can't we do that anymore? And we do. We pray for people to get, to, to get healed after they've been sick. No, like, and we do them right, and, and sometimes we've seen it. Not always. Sometimes we've seen it that we pray over them and we ask, for, we ask God, and God heals. Yes, but not in the way that we've seen through the Bible. Why? Are we living in an era of silence? Are we in a, in a time of silence? 
why can't we talk to God the way that he talked to us in the Old Testament? I think there was, the way that he spoke to them was needed in that time. Do you think more people would believe if actually, if God would actually speak to us in the way that he used to? I don't know, and I think that's also another reason. Maybe people would hard to, find it more hard to believe if it was like, walk and then someone just started walking you know like I feel like if I saw that I'd be like eh. maybe that I don't know but what if you went to his grandma's house or like his dad's house was being paralytic his whole life and you're like get up and walk you think he'll they'll believe the you person think, yeah you think so yeah okay interesting We'll talk about it next week. We'll address that, right? Because I, I think it, it's kind of like the same thing. It's There's an era of silence, and I'm sure a lot of like the, the Hebrews and a lot of God's people were saying, were asking the same question, God, where are you? Like, where are you in the middle of this? Like, why, why aren't you answering? Why aren't you you're asking the same thing? During this rise up of Joseph Maccabeus, and then when Rome began, is when the actual sex of, like, um, um, the Pharisees and the Sadducees began, began because the Romans respected the Jews, so they allowed them to create certain groups that um, would dominate over the people, such as the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and that's how that group began. It, it's a group that began to follow all the laws and establish all the rules of how the Jewish people would, would, would be, um, um, would, would, would comply with society, right? So... Have we just pretty much just complied with society and the things that God is capable of doing, have we just kind of put them to the side? Are we living in a time of silence? Or is God still as active today as he's always been? Okay. I'll ask you next week. Okay. Let's stand and pray.